Professor Zick Snacks cleared his throat analogues, a sound reminiscent of a malfunctioning garbage disposal attempting to grind up a particularly stubborn rubber duck. The classroom of mixed species alien students quieted down, their various appendages, tentacles, and sensory organs all focusing on the gelatinous blob at the front of the room. Today, class Zick Snacks gurgled, his voice modulator struggling to keep up with the rapid fluctuations in his body's density. We will be discussing one of the most fascinating and terrifying species in the known galaxy humans. A chorus of gasps, clicks, and one particularly loud fart which was actually a sign of intense interest from the gaseous entity in the back row rippled through the classroom. Now, now. Zixnax continued, his form rippling with what passed for amusement in his species. I know we've all heard the stories. Humans surviving atmospheres that would melt most of us faster than a Zarblaxian ice cream cone in a supernova. Humans casually walking around with enough kinetic energy to level a small moon. Humans eating substances that would be classified as bioweapons on most civilized worlds. He paused for dramatic effect, which was somewhat ruined by a small globule of his body breaking off and plopping onto the floor. The class politely pretended not to notice as he hastily reabsorbed it. But today we're going to discuss something even more mind-boggling about these death worlders. Something that makes even their most hardened warriors look like cuddly fluffkins in comparison. The class leaned forward in anticipation, or at least those with the physical capability to lean did so. The others simply intensified their attention in various species-specific ways. I'm talking, of course, about their pets. The word hung in the air like a bad smell which, coincidentally, was how the aforementioned gaseous entity expressed confusion. Ah, I see by your blank stares, tentacle twitches, and that particularly pungent odor that you're all wondering what in the name of the galactic core is a pet. Zixnax's body wobbled in a way that suggested he was about to drop a bombshell, or possibly that he was having digestive issues. It was often hard to tell with his species. Well, my dear students, prepare to have your minds blown, or in some cases, literally exploded. I'm looking at you, Kras TK. Please make sure your cranial pressure release valve is properly adjusted. The rock-like student in question gave a gravelly grumble of acknowledgement. A, a pet, in human terms, is a creature that they voluntarily bring into their dwellings, a creature they feed, care for, and brace yourselves show affection to. The class erupted in a cacophony of disbelief, expressed through various vocalizations, color changes, and in one case, spontaneous mitosis. Silence Zixnacks bellowed, his form momentarily taking on the shape of a giant exclamation point before settling back into his usual amorphous blob. I know it sounds insane, but I assure you, it's true. And it gets worse. He activated the holo projector, and an image of a human appeared, smiling and holding. Something, this class, is what humans call a dog. It is one of their most popular pets. The image zoomed in on the creature in the human's arms. It had fur, sharp teeth, and eyes that seemed to bore into the very soul of every being in the room. Now, let me list some facts about this dog Zyke Snacks continued, his voice taking on a tone that suggested he still couldn't quite believe what he was about to say. First, it is a descendant of wolves, apex predators that hunted in packs and could bring down prey many times their size. Its ancestors were so feared that they became the stuff of human legends and nightmares. A tentacled student in the front row began to slowly ooze under her desk in terror. Second, it possesses a bite force strong enough to crush bones. Its teeth are designed for tearing flesh. In fact, some breeds of dog were specifically created by humans to be more efficient killing machines. The gaseous entity student was now emitting a scent that could only be described as sheer panic with notes of citrus. Third, it has heightened senses that make it an exceptional hunter. Its sense of smell is so acute that humans use these creatures to detect explosives, drugs, and even certain diseases. Kras TK's cranial pressure release valve gave an ominous whistle. And finally, Zixnax paused, stealing himself. Humans allow these creatures to sleep in their beds, lick their faces, and play with their young. The class erupted once again, this time in a mixture of horror, disbelief, and in the case of one particularly brave insectoid student, morbid curiosity. Professor the insectoid clicked, its mandibles quivering. Surely you must be joking. No sapient species would willingly cohabitate with such a dangerous predator. 
Zixnax's body rippled in what might have been a sigh. I assure you, I am not joking. In fact, humans have a saying dog is man's best friend. The class collectively lost their minds. Or minds equivalent, in some cases. Best. Friend a crystalline being in the back of the room chimed, its facets reflecting utter bewilderment. As in, a close companion. Precisely Zixnax confirmed. Humans form deep emotional bonds with these creatures. They mourn when they die. They celebrate their birthdays. Some even dress them up in tiny outfits, which, quite frankly, is where I draw the line at understanding. The hollow image changed to show a human walking several dogs on leashes. Oh. And did I mention? Humans take these predators on walks. They parade them through their cities and parks, often multiple at a time, restrained only by a thin strip of material. The gaseous entity student had now condensed into a small, quivering puddle of liquid terror. But wait, Zixnax exclaimed, his gelatinous form vibrating with what could only be described as manic glee. There's more. Humans don't just keep one type of predator as a pet. Oh no, that would be far too simple for these walking disaster magnets. The hollow image changed again, this time showing a human cradling a small, furry creature with sharp claws and keen eyes. This, my poor, Traumatized students is what humans call a cat. The class, having thought they had reached the limits of their capacity for shock, found new depths of astonishment to plumb. While smaller than the dog, the cat is no less a predator. It possesses razor-sharp claws, excellent night vision, and reflexes so fast they can catch birds mid-flight. In fact, when humans brought these creatures to new environments, they often decimated local wildlife populations. A plant-based student in the corner began to photosynthesize stress hormones at an alarming rate. The cats are obligate carnivores, meaning they must eat meat to survive. They are such efficient hunters that humans often employ them to control populations of smaller pests in their dwellings and food storage areas. The insectoid student was now making a high-pitched keening noise, its exoskeleton vibrating in terror. And yet... Et... Zixnax continued his voice taking on a tone of wonder mixed with horror, humans consider these murder machines to be cute and cuddly. They allow them to walk on their food preparation surfaces, sleep on their faces, and knead their soft flesh with their knife-like claws in what humans insist is a sign of affection. The class was now in various states of distress. The crystalline being had fractured slightly. The gaseous entity was emitting a smell best described as existential dread. Kraz TK's cranial pressure release valve was now emitting a constant, high-pitched whistle. But surely a brave voice piped up from the middle of the room, belonging to a multi-eyed floating orb. Surely these must be the most extreme examples of human pets, right? Zixnax's entire form shook in what might have been laughter, or possibly a seizure. Oh, my sweet summer child, he gurgled, if only that were true. Let me introduce you to some other common human pets. The hollow image began to cycle through a series of creatures, each more terrifying than the last. This is a snake. Many species are venomous enough to kill a human with a single bite. Humans keep them in glass boxes in their living rooms. The multi-eyed orb began to spin rapidly, its eyes blinking in and out of existence in clear distress. This is a tarantula. It's a large, hairy arachnid that some humans allow to crawl on their bare skin. The insectoid student had now curled into a tight ball, chittering what sounded suspiciously like a prayer to long-forgotten arthropod gods. In this, this is a horse. It's a half-ton herbivore that humans sit on top of for fun. Some humans keep them in their yards. The kick from one of these creatures can cave in a human skull. Kras TK finally lost control of his cranial pressure, a small jet of steam shooting from his release valve and leaving a scorch mark on the ceiling. But Professor the Crystalline being chimed weakly, a few more cracks appearing in its structure. Why? Why do humans surround themselves with these dangerous creatures? Zixnax's form settled into something resembling a shrug. The reasons are many and varied, much like humans themselves. Some claim these pets provide companionship, emotional support, and even health benefits. Others use them for practical purposes like hunting, security, or pest control. And some, well, some humans just think they're neat. The class collectively boggled at the idea of finding any of these creatures neat. In fact, Zixnax continued, warming to his subject, humans have been known to risk their own lives to save their pets from danger. 
There are recorded instances of humans running into burning buildings, jumping into turbulent waters, or even fighting off larger predators to rescue these creatures they've bonded with. The gaseous entity, which had been slowly reforming, promptly evaporated again at this new information. It's a testament to the human ability to form connections with other species, as well as their seemingly infinite capacity for ignoring mortal danger Zix, Nax mused. One could argue that this trait, this ability to befriend and domesticate dangerous creatures, is part of what makes humans themselves so formidable. The hollow image changed once more, this time showing a human child gleefully hugging a dog nearly as large as itself. From a young age, humans are taught to interact with these creatures. They learn to respect their strength while also forming emotional bonds. In a way, growing up alongside predators has shaped human psychology and perhaps even contributed to their success as a species. The class was silent now, each student lost in contemplation of this bizarre and terrifying aspect of human culture. But wait, Zixnax exclaimed suddenly, causing several students to emit various startled noises and secretions. We haven't even touched on the most mind-boggling aspect of human pet culture yet. The class, having thought they had reached the absolute limit of their capacity for astonishment, braced themselves for whatever fresh horror their professor was about to unleash. Human Zixnax began, his voice dropping to a dramatic whisper, have entire industries dedicated to their pets. The hollow image began cycling through scenes that seemed to defy logic stores filled with toys and accessories for these predators, elaborate grooming salons, pet hotels, and even restaurants that catered exclusively to dogs. They spend billions of credits every year on food, healthcare, and entertainment for these creatures. There are human medical professionals who specialize exclusively in treating pets. Some humans even celebrate their pets' birthdays with parties and gifts. The insectoid student, who had been slowly uncurling from its protective ball, promptly rolled back up with a distressed chirp. But it gets even more bizarre, Zixnax continued, his gelatinous form quivering with what might have been excitement or possibly a mild seizure. Humans have created entire social networks dedicated to sharing images and videos of their pets. Some of these animals have become what humans call celebrities, with millions of followers and lucrative endorsement deals. The crystalline being in the back let out a chime of utter disbelief, a few more cracks appearing in its structure. Indeed, Zixnax nodded, or at least performed the blob equivalent of a nod. There are cats and dogs on the human internet that are more famous and wealthy than most sentient beings in the galaxy. Humans will spend hours watching videos of these creatures doing, well, pretty much anything. He pulled up a hollow video of a cat knocking objects off a table while maintaining eye contact with the camera. The class watched in stunned silence as the view counter on the video ticked up into the millions. This video, Zixnax explained, has been viewed more times than there are sentient beings in the Galactic Federation. Humans find this behavior entertaining. Some even describe it as adorable. The gaseous entity, which had been slowly recondensing, let out a confused puff that smelled vaguely of burnt toast. But Professor the multi-eyed orb student ventured, its eyes swirling in a pattern that suggested deep confusion. Surely not all humans engage in this bizarre practice. Zixnax's body rippled in what might have been a chuckle. While it's true that not every human has a pet, the practice is incredibly widespread. In fact, in many human cultures, it's more unusual to not have a pet than to have one. Some humans who can't or choose not to keep pets in their homes will still seek out interactions with these creatures. The hollow image changed to show a bustling city street. The class watched in horror as humans casually walked past each other, many of them with dogs on leashes or carrying small cats in their arms. In human cities, it's common to see these predators everywhere. They're in parks, in stores, sometimes even in restaurants. Some humans take their dogs to work with them. There are offices where cats roam freely, supposedly to reduce stress among the human workers. Kraz TK's cranial pressure release valve let out a long, low whistle of disbelief. But surely the crystalline being chimed weakly, surely there must be accidents. Incidents where these predators turn on their human captors. Zixnax's form rippled in what might have been a sigh. While such incidents do occur, they are surprisingly rare given the number of these creatures living alongside humans. In fact, humans are far more likely to be injured by their own furniture or cooking implements than by their pets. 
the class collectively boggled at the implication that human furniture and cooking tools were also apparently dangerous. This brings us to another fascinating aspect of human pet culture Zixnacks continued, warming to his subject. Humans have developed complex systems of training and socialization for these creatures. They use a combination of positive reinforcement, behavioral conditioning, and what they call love to shape the behavior of these predators. The holo image changed to show a human training a dog to perform various tricks. Observe how the human uses small food rewards and vocal praise to encourage desired behaviors. Over time, many of these pets become so attuned to human commands that they can perform complex tasks, assist with disabilities, or even participate in dangerous rescue operations. The insectoid student, who had been slowly uncurling again, let out a series of confused clicks. Are you saying, Professor, that humans have managed to convince apex predators to not only not eat them, but to actually help them? Zixnax's body wobbled in what might have been a nod. Precisely Zixnax confirmed, his gelatinous form rippling with what might have been pride. Humans have not only tamed these creatures, but have formed symbiotic relationships with them. It's a testament to their adaptability and their bizarre talent for befriending anything that doesn't immediately kill them. The class sat in stunned silence, trying to process this information. The gaseous entity student had stopped emitting odors entirely, apparently having short-circuited its scent glands. But wait, Zixnax exclaimed, his voice modulator hitting a pitch that made several students' sensory organs vibrate uncomfortably. We haven't even touched on the most mind-boggling aspect of human pet culture yet. The class, having thought they had reached the absolute limit of their capacity for astonishment, braced themselves for whatever fresh horror their professor was about to unleash. Human Zixnax began, his voice dropping to a dramatic whisper. Don't just keep traditionally domesticated animals as pets. Oh no, that would be far too simple for these walking disaster magnets. Some humans keep what they call exotic pets. The holo image changed to show a human casually draping a massive constrictor snake around their shoulders. This, my dear students, is what humans call a python. It's a predator capable of swallowing prey larger than some of you. And yes, some humans keep these as pets. The insectoid student, who had been slowly uncurling from its protective ball, promptly rolled back up with a distressed chirp. But it gets even more bizarre, Zexnax continued, his gelatinous form quivering with what might have been excitement or possibly a mild seizure. Some humans keep big cats as pets. And by big cats, I mean apex predators like lions and tigers. The holo image changed to show a human lounging on a sofa with a full-grown tiger. The crystalline being in the back let out a chime of utter disbelief, a few more cracks appearing in its structure. Indeed, Zixnax nodded, or at least performed the blob equivalent of a nod. While keeping such dangerous predators is illegal in many human jurisdictions, there are still those who insist on sharing their living spaces with creatures that could easily tear them limb from limb. The gaseous entity student, which had been slowly recondensing, promptly evaporated again, leaving behind only a faint scent of existential dread. But Professor the Multi-Eyed Orb student ventured, its eyes swirling in a pattern that suggested deep confusion. Why would humans take such risks? Surely the danger outweighs any possible benefit. Zixnax's body rippled in what might have been a shrug. The reasons are as varied as humans themselves. Some claim a deep spiritual connection with these creatures. Others simply enjoy the thrill and status of owning such a dangerous animal. And some, well, some humans just think they're neat. The class collectively boggled at the idea of finding any of these creatures neat. It's worth noting Zixnax continued, his tone becoming slightly more serious, that many humans strongly disapprove of keeping such dangerous creatures as pets. There are ongoing debates and legal battles within human society about the ethics and safety of exotic pet ownership. The holo image changed to show protesters holding signs with slogans like tigers are not pets and keep wildlife wild. This disagreement within human society is actually a perfect example of another fascinating aspect of their species Zix Nax mused. Humans have a remarkable capacity for debate and dissent, even on issues that seem straightforward to outside observers. It's part of what makes them so unpredictable and, frankly, terrifying to deal with on a galactic scale. Kras TK's cranial pressure release valve let out a long, low whistle of agreement. But let's return to the more common pets Zyxnax said, changing the hollow image back to a montage of dogs and cats. These creatures have been living alongside humans for thousands of years. 
to the point where they've become intrinsically linked to human culture and psychology. The image changed to show ancient cave paintings depicting humans hunting alongside dogs. From the earliest days of human civilization, these animals have played crucial roles. Dogs assisted in hunting and provided protection. Cats helped control vermin populations that threatened food supplies. Over time, these practical partnerships evolved into deep emotional bonds. The insectoid student, who had been slowly uncurling again, let out a series of thoughtful clicks. Are you saying, Professor, that these pets have actually influenced human evolution? Zix Nax's body wobbled in what might have been an enthusiastic nod. Excellent observation. Many human scientists believe that the domestication of animals, particularly dogs, played a crucial role in human development. The partnership with dogs may have given early humans an edge in hunting and warfare, allowing them to outcompete other hominid species. The class murmured in a mixture of awe and horror at the idea of humans using other predators to become even more effective predators themselves. But it goes beyond mere practical benefits, Six Nax continued. The human pet bond has had profound effects on human psychology and social behavior. Humans who grow up with pets often display higher levels of empathy and emotional intelligence. Some human medical professionals even use animal interactions as a form of therapy for various psychological and physical ailments. The hollow image changed to show a series of heartwarming scenes a child learning to walk with the support of a patient dog, an elderly human's face lighting up at the sight of a purring cat, a veteran with PTSD finding comfort in the presence of a service animal. These scenes may look touching to us now. Zixnak said softly, his usual sarcastic tone momentarily subdued, but imagine how they would appear to a species encountering humans for the first time. A sentient race that not only coexists with predators, but relies on them for emotional support and healing. It's simultaneously beautiful and terrifying. The class was silent, each student lost in contemplation of this bizarre and touching aspect of human culture. But don't let these heartwarming images fool you, Zixnax suddenly exclaimed, his tone snapping back to its usual mix of amusement and horror. Humans' relationships with their pets can sometimes veer into the realm of the truly bizarre. The holo image changed to show a series of increasingly outlandish scenes humans dressing their pets in elaborate costumes, pets with their own social media accounts, luxury pet hotels that rivaled high-end human resorts. Some humans treat their pets better than they treat other humans, Zix Nax explained, his gelatinous form quivering with what might have been laughter. There are pets that eat better, live in more luxurious accommodations, and receive better health care than many sentient beings in the galaxy. The gaseous entity student, which had finally managed to fully recondense, emitted a confused odor that smelled vaguely of expensive perfume and utter bafflement. There are human celebrities who carry their tiny dogs in designer bags worth more than the gross domestic product of some small country, Zyke Snacks continued. There are cats that have inherited millions of credits from their wealthy owners. There are even humans who have their deceased pets taxidermied or cloned because they can't bear to part with them. The crystalline being in the back let out a chime that could only be described as a mixture of horror and fascination, a few more cracks appearing in its structure. But perhaps the most mind-boggling aspect of all Zixnax said, his voice dropping to a dramatic whisper, is how humans anthropomorphize their pets. They assign them complex emotions, project personalities onto them, and even imagine entire inner monologues for these creatures. The holo image changed to show a series of internet memes featuring animals with humorous captions. Humans spend countless hours creating and sharing these images, imagining what their pets might say if they could speak. They have entire industries built around this concept, from greeting cards to animated movies. The class stared at the images in confused silence, unable to comprehend the humor that humans apparently found in them. In fact, Zixnax continued, warming to his subject, humans are so attached to this idea of animal sentience that they often attribute near-human levels of intelligence and emotion to their pets. They'll swear that their dog feels guilty when it misbehaves, or that their cat is plotting world domination. The insectoid student, who had finally fully uncurled, let out a series of clicks that might have been laughter. Surely they don't actually believe their pets are plotting to take over their world. Zix Nax's form rippled in what might have been a chuckle. Oh, most of them know it's just a joke. Probably. Maybe. To be honest with humans, it's often hard to tell where the joke ends and genuine belief begins. 
The class murmured in a mixture of amusement and concern. But here's the truly fascinating part, Zixnak said, his tone becoming more serious. But while humans may sometimes go overboard with their anthropomorphization, they're not entirely wrong about animal intelligence and emotion. Recent studies have shown that many animals, particularly those commonly kept as pets, are far more intelligent and emotionally complex than we once believed. The holo image changed to show a series of diagrams comparing animal and human brains. Dogs, for instance, have been shown to understand human pointing gestures better than our closest primate relatives. They can recognize human emotions and even seem to experience jealousy. Cats, despite their aloof reputation, form strong attachments to their human companions and can even recognize their names. The multi-eyed orb student's eyes were spinning in a pattern that suggested deep thought. Are you saying, Professor, that humans' bizarre obsession with their pets has actually led to scientific breakthroughs? Zix Nax's body wobbled in what might have been an enthusiastic nod. Exactly. Humans' determination to understand and communicate with their animal companions has driven significant advancements in the fields of animal cognition and behavior. It's a perfect example of how humans' seemingly irrational behaviors can sometimes lead to remarkable discoveries. The class sat in stunned silence, trying to process this information. The gaseous entity student emitted a scent that could only be described as mind-blown. But wait, Zixnax exclaimed, his voice modulator hitting a pitch that made several students' sensory organs vibrate uncomfortably. We haven't even touched on the most mind-boggling aspect of human pet culture yet. The class, having thought they had reached the absolute limit of their capacity for astonishment, braced themselves for whatever fresh horror their professor was about to unleash. Humans, Zixnax began, his voice dropping to a dramatic whisper, have begun to extend their concept of pets beyond Earth's creatures. As they ventured into space and encountered new species, some humans have started to keep alien life forms as pets. The holo image changed to show a human lovingly cradling a bioluminescent, tentacled creature that looked like a cross between an octopus and a disco ball. This, my dear students, is what humans call a space pet. It's a non-sentient alien life form that humans have decided would make a delightful addition to their homes. And yes, before you ask, it's just as dangerous and unpredictable as you'd imagine. The insectoid student, who had been finally relaxing, promptly curled back into a protective ball with a distressed chirp. But it gets even more bizarre, Zexnax continued, his gelatinous form quivering with what might have been excitement or possibly a mild seizure. Some humans have expressed interest in keeping sentient alien species as pets. The class erupted in a cacophony of horrified noises, color changes, and in one case, spontaneous mitosis. Calm down, calm down, Zixnax gurgled, his form momentarily taking the shape of a giant hand making a placating gesture. I said some humans have expressed interest, not that it's actually happening. The Galactic Federation has very strict laws against such practices. The class collectively breathed a sigh of relief, or at least performed their species-specific equivalent. However, Zixnax continued, his tone becoming more serious, this desire to form bonds with alien species, even potentially dangerous ones, is a crucial aspect of human psychology that we must understand if we're to coexist with them in the galactic community. The holo image changed to show scenes of humans interacting peacefully with various alien species. Humans' ability to form emotional connections with creatures vastly different from themselves is both their greatest strength and their most terrifying trait. It's what allows them to forge alliances with species that other races would consider too alien or too dangerous to approach. But it's also what makes them unpredictable and potentially dangerous themselves. The class murmured in a mixture of awe and concern. After all, Zixnax said, his voice taking on a tone of wry amusement, a species that's willing to snuggle up to apex predators and COO over creatures that could melt their faces off is not a species to be underestimated. They might just decide that your species would make an adorable pet. The gaseous entity student promptly evaporated again, leaving behind only a faint scent of existential dread. But fear not, Zixnax quickly added, his form rippling in what might have been reassurance. Humans' fondness for pets doesn't mean they don't understand the concept of sentience or respect for other intelligent life. In fact, their experience with forming bonds across species lines often makes them more open to interstellar diplomacy than many other races.
The hollow image changed to show humans working alongside various alien species on diplomatic missions and scientific projects. Understanding humans' relationships with their pets is crucial to understanding humans themselves, Zixnax concluded. It reveals their capacity for empathy, their willingness to take risks for emotional connections, their ability to communicate across species lines, and their remarkable talent for seeing potential friends in the most unlikely places. The class sat in thoughtful silence, each student contemplating the bizarre and fascinating species they'd learned about. And so, Zixnax said, his form settling into something resembling a serious posture as we continue our studies of human culture and behavior, remember this a species that can look at a creature designed by nature to kill them and think, oh, we, how cute. I'm going to name it Fluffy is a species capable of anything. Approach with caution, respect, and maybe a few treats in your pocket. Class dismissed. As the students filed out of the room, still buzzing with discussion about the day's lesson, Zix Nax allowed himself a small ripple of satisfaction. Teaching xenobiology was never dull, especially when the subject was humans. He glanced at the small terrarium on his desk, where a tiny earth cactus sat innocuously. Don't worry, Spiky gurgled softly. Your secret is safe with me. The cactus, of course, said nothing. But Zixnax could have sworn it looked a little greener than usual. After all, when it came to humans and their pets, anything was possible. 